I'm Jim Carney. I'm Linda Hirsch. And this is EdCast, a program created and produced by educators for everyone interested in education. Today, EdCast takes to the stage to examine New York City schools through the eyes of award-winning playwright and actress Nalija Sun's one-woman play, No Child, drawing on her experiences as a teacher artist in some of New York's most challenging schools. Ms. Sun has crafted a tour de force exploration of the New York City school system. We'll view excerpts from the play and talk to Nalaja Sun about what she learned about education working with students in the city schools. Linda, our producer Jerry Bernard and I had the opportunity to see the show during its limited run last month and were quite impressed, as were many other theater goers at the Barrow Street Theater in the West Village. I spoke with some of them and we'll see their reactions a little bit later in the show. But now to Linda and Elijah's son in the studio. My guest today on this special theatrical edition of EdCast is Nalaja Sun, actress and award-winning playwright. Her one-woman play, No Child, is a fictionalized account of Miss Sun's years as a teaching artist in the New York City schools. It is warm, humorous, sad, provocative, and always engaging. Mm. Welcome to EdCast. I'm glad to be here, Linda. Your play obviously references um, the Bush era, No Child Left Behind mm -hmm. Act, that legislation of 2002. But what really prompted you to write this play? Well, um, the title is actually called No Child Dot 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 yeah. because by the end of the show, I'd love for uh, the audience to end uh, that sentence on their own. So it doesn't necessarily mean No Child mm -hmm. Left Behind. It could okay. mean whatever it is you want it to mean as a as a human being. Okay. Um, though I do know that during that time uh, it was the pink elephant in the room, <laughs> if you will, okay. for teachers. Yeah. So I knew that at least I had to um, call it some sort of no child. I didn't mm -hmm. wanna, it was kind of like a sexy title, truthfully. Mm -hmm. When you see no child, you know that it's about education mm -hmm. and that's precisely mm -hmm. what I want everyone to know. They're going to see a show about education and they're going to see a show about kids. And what prompted you to take these experiences that you had and put them into play form? I was actually commissioned by the New York State Council of the Arts through Epic Theatre Center and they are they're called Epic Theatre Ensemble now mm -hmm. and they are a group that I teach with. I teach with various different theaters and theatre communities all across the city and um, one lovely December um, in 2004, they said, you know, hey, would you be interested in writing a piece about education since ah. you've done other solo pieces? And so I wrote this play actually for three or four people. And then I was, um, I was asked, hey, would you be interested in writing, uh, doing this as a solo piece? So this piece is actually for three or four people. And I've licensed it out all so that all across the country there are actors and actresses doing it. Oh, I can't the imagine they them doing do it. it as well as you. But oh, but they do. Oh, but they do. <laughs> as the teacher artist portrayed in the play, uh, the teacher asks the students in the play, who here has ever seen a play? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what the reaction is. Yeah, that's one question that I ask a lot when I um, work with kids, even, even when I work with kids in Tanzania, Africa during the summers, because it's important to know that a lot of kids have not seen theater or um, have never gone to a theater or have never seen a play. Um, and so uh, you really are working with them um, in a basic, level of experience. In one of the earliest scenes in the play, um, the teacher is um, talking to someone about not being able to pay her rent. Yeah. So let's take a look <laughs> and see that scene. Sure. For a moment, okay. The real reason why I called you was to let you know that I'm starting this new program up here up in the Bronx and it's a six week long course and they're paying me exactly what I owe you. So what's that? Uh, theater. I'm teaching theater. A play, actually. It's called Our Country's Good. Have you heard of it? Well, it's about a group of convicts that put on a play. So the kids are actually going to be doing a play within a play within a play within. What's that? Ah. Uh, kids today need more discipline and less self-expression. Less lulala and more daily structure. In the scene that we just saw, there's a suggestion given to the teacher artist that 
What the students need is more discipline yes. and less self-expression. Less lulu la Okay, what do you <laughs> think of that idea? And I'm sure it's been said by others as well. Well, in, in that particular scene, she also says that she went to Catholic school for 13 years. Um, and um, that is my character saying that, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that um, I was lucky enough to get the great discipline of Catholic school. Uh, but in terms of my expression, I kind of found it when I was in college. Um, and so I do find that a lot of um, grown-ups, adults, mm -hmm. mention, oh, wow, what is this whole arts education mm -hmm. thing? Shouldn't the kids be learning science Especially and math? Especially these students. Especially these students. But I, what I think is so important is that in many schools, the, the teaching of how to be human um, is kind of uh, neglected in a way and that's what I think is so great about uh, being an artist going into a school not only are we teaching the kids uh, raisin in the sun and mm -hmm. our country's good and enemy of the people but we're also interspersing as well as many other fabulous mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. we're also interspersing the idea of empathy mm -hmm. of um, caring for one another of caring for yourself confidence, the confidence to mm -hmm. speak up. Right. Um, and so that, that is so very interesting in order to get our kids to a place where they can really speak up at a job interview or, or speak up in life. Um, so it gives them some confidence. I also go yeah. out on a limb and say that doing a play requires a lot of discipline. It really does. So instead of it being sort of less discipline, this idea of performing and learning mm -hmm. and doing a play, I, I think teaches a lot of discipline. Yes, and focus, most don't definitely. That. Mm -hmm. The other scene um, that we're going to look at next yeah. is when the teacher, in, when you come in, when the teacher artist introduces herself to the class and she says that she is going to be doing this teaching of a play, this performing of the play with the students. So let's take a look and see sure. how that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hi, I'm Miss Sun and I will be with you all for the next six weeks. And by the end of those glorious weeks, you would have read a play, analyzed the play, been cast in it, rehearsed it, and lastly, performed it. Huh. It's gonna be a whirlwind spectacle that I want you to start inviting your friends and your loved ones and your parents to come see. What's that? No, 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 it's not a Raisin in the Sun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a Lorca play. It's a play called Our Country's Good. Ew, this is like patriotism? <laughs> patriotism? No, no, no. It's a play based in Australia in 1788. And it's written by a woman named Timberlake Wordenbaker. Hey, yo, Justin Timberlake don't know herself to play? <laughs> so rock your body today. Uh, it's me, Brian, focus. People say she's a gold digger. But she don't mess with her rope niggas. Brian, put down the Red Bull. Sorry, it's me, Brad Rice. Brian! Vegetable fried rice. Hey, yo, this is some white shit. Ain't this illegal to teach this white shit no more? Are you done? Huh? Are you done? What? Are you done with your spiel, with your little spiel? <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> because I'm trying to tell you what the play is about, and I can't when you keep on interrupting me. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, she got that too. <laughs> I like that. The initial response the teacher gets from the kids is pretty negative. I yeah. mean, they make fun, they're really not very receptive. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they have this reaction? Um, <clears throat> I really do feel like in, in terms of anything, any teacher on their first day, uh, there is a, a test that we are taking as mm -hmm. teachers. Will this person be able to absorb <clears throat> all of these different um, levels of um, neediness mm -hmm. of uh, attention issues of will this is this person strong enough is this teacher standing in front of us strong enough to deal with all of us and so I really do feel a lot of the times that the students are testing us on our first day to see if we're strong enough they're testing us on our second day on our third day to see if we'll come back and um, it's really not until the end when they realized you stayed you stuck it through um, you didn't kill them you know <laughs> um, but you know you did it you did it with um, with love in your heart um, that's when I find in my experience that they that they recognize you as 
Miss, you know, you done good. Um, well, your thank you so much. Of the students are hilarious and they're just right on target. Yeah. They're so they're so compelling. Mm -hmm. Do you find in addition to testing the teacher, however, that they also don't take the concept of doing the play as a serious academic endeavor mm -hmm. in the same way that the teacher is told more structure, you know, more discipline. Uh, that the students have some of those same misconceptions about the arts in the you, classroom? As a teaching artist, you always pair up with a teacher. And I always think that um, depending on how mm. uh, that teacher feels about the work that you're doing as a teaching artist, that really sets the example for um, the, um, all of the students as teachers. Teachers are so um, very What's important. What's your experience and been in the many years of so many doing different this in kinds terms of, of being experiences. set up by the teacher? Yeah, so many different kinds of experiences. I can usually tell if um, um, if we have um, meetings, if we have meetings that we've set up and the teacher either doesn't show up or cancels, I can usually tell where that's going to go. I can um, usually tell it's going to be kind of like a one-woman show, the teaching artist doing her own thing. Whereas if a teacher set, actually sets up the meetings and is there promptly and we, we're having a dialogue, I can usually tell that then that kind of dialogue um, is going to transfer um, into the classroom, into the classroom, and then the students will see, in fact, uh, that Ms. Johnson and Ms. Sun are indeed working with one another, which is so mm -hmm. important and for the success of teaching artists. So then they're more receptive yeah. to what you're doing. So much more. Uh, Jim Carney, as you know, Jim Carney and I yeah. went to see the play, yes. and Jim actually went back to interview people in the audience after they'd seen the play. Ah, so let's take a look and sure. see some of the reactions. Yeah. Um, it was really quite great. We're both teachers, and so it was really cool to see her take on the situation in education. And um, she did an excellent job of providing all the different characters. It was truly amazing. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it because I felt like uh, you could picture different students that you had yourself in this in this sort of collection of students, collection of personalities, and so it was so universal because of what teachers really struggle with every day. I really enjoyed it. It was really, it was really good and entertaining. And I'm a teaching artist myself, and um, I could relate to some of her experiences she recounted. So you could really relate to a lot of the the uh, characters in the play. Yeah, I grew up in New York City, and I went to public school here, and um, it was pretty accurate and really well done. Um, I thought it was absolutely amazing. It's actually my second time seeing it. Um, I saw it once in 2007, and then it came back. And once I heard it was coming back, I was like, I had to see it again. I think it's really great commentary on the public education today. Oh my gosh, I am absolutely astounded and shocked. <laughs> it was um, an acting tour de force. Like every moment was so clear, so precise, especially specific. I want to use the word because there was not a moment when I didn't know which character was speaking what, and especially that one moment when she went, <laughs> it was like, wow. Why do you think your play has resonated so much with theater goers? I think, sometimes I don't know, I think what it, is. Aside from the kudos given to you as an actress, let yeah. us not overlook that. I mean, your performance is amazing, but there's a real resonance with the content of the play. Yeah, Where do you yeah. think that comes from? It's interesting. The reason why I say I don't know is because sometimes I'm so in it that I can't see outside. But what I think, from what I've heard after over 700 shows, is that teachers need to be heard. It's the kind of thing that um, sometimes when I go to a party, I make the decision whether I tell people I'm going to be an actress or, uh, or uh, I am an actress or I'm a teaching artist. Um, when I say I'm a teaching artist, most people go, oh, that's great, wonderful, and they go, you know, wandering away to the uh, cheese platter. <laughs> Whereas if I see I'm an actress, I, like, I can't hmm. shake them in this community, in this America that we live in, in this society, um, being an actor is so very important, mm -hmm. you know, and being a teacher is so very not important. And as long as um, people kind of uh, ignore uh, the, tr the human importance mm -hmm. of, of all teachers, 
then then um, I will I will keep doing the show. I guess it's clear that the show relates to the teachers. I mean, they we had one person say I've had all these students, mm -hmm. and someone else said, you know, I really identify with this play. But there yeah. are also non-teachers who go to see this play. Yeah, there and are, and they're very moved by it as well. Do you have any yeah. idea what they are responding to? Hopefully, I, I I hope that a they didn't realize that our kids are that funny, and that makes them very happy, you know, and um, I hope that they've seen um, the souls of at least one teenager and that they identify with that because we all were students once. We've all had teachers. We've all had that one teacher we're that still opened all up. Students yes, in that's one way right. Or another, that's <laughs> right. And we've all had that one teacher that really opened up our mm -hmm. hearts and hopefully I hope that they're hopefully. thinking about their that teacher and um, so they're relating as students you think love. as well. Yeah, I hope yeah, so. That's, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. In one very compelling scene, mm -hmm. the students begin to discuss the play that the teacher artist has selected, which yeah. is Our Country's Good. And she tries to help them see the relevance of this play to their own lives. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look. Yeah. Then we go to class and tell us we gotta go to with a teacher we gotta learn from and a play we gotta do. Great, and now that you feel like prisoners, open up to page 27. <laughs> Philip says, Watkin, man is born free, and everywhere he is in chains. What do people expect from prisoners? For say, oh, for them to succeed in life. Ah, but in the play, Coca. They say see by doing the exact opposite of what people expect. Yeah, exactly. So what does this have to do with our lives? Shoot, don't nobody expect us to do nothing but drop out, go to jail, get pregnant, or work for the MTA! Oh. Hey, yo, my mom worked for the MTA, nigga! <laughs> Sorry, bitch. <this>. Negro. <laughs> so these characters is going through what we kind of going through right now. Now, there's a interesting conversation going on in that scene mm -hmm. where the teacher is teacher artist is trying to explain to them how this play relates to the students and they seem to be picking up on, on certain ways but this yeah. no first of all why did you select the play our country's good um, I mm. actually have never taught our country's good it, it is one of those plays that um, you should really teach to you should work on it with maybe a senior um, group who is who are really um, really want to either be actors mm -hmm. or really interested in acting only because there's there's a lot of language in it mm -hmm. and it's and it's pretty um, a pretty evolved piece so did you select it this is a kind of metaphorical piece most definitely ways, it is symbolic true. piece most definitely there are so many schools that I go into and that I will still be going into where um, the amount of security that you have to deal with is actually almost as long as the entire school day so this notion of the prisoner, I mean, our yeah. country's good talks about these prisoners and mm -hmm. this I, kind of identification, I guess, in the playwright's mind with the students as prisoners and some, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Do you see our students as prisoners of No Child Left Behind of a school? Uh -huh. I, tell me, what, what do you think? It wasn't until I started actually working in um, correctional facilities and federal prisons that I started making that link because uh, many of the men that I worked with who were in prison were mentioning how um, they were, they felt like they were a part of a system, and a system that started early on. Then I would walk into the high schools, go through this, the security, afterwards go out into the school, out of, out into their neighborhoods, and really kind of notice that there is this system that the kids are um, working through, uh, living under. And so it's the kind of thing where you want to really recognize, you want to not only recognize it, but you want to illuminate it for the students. You know, not everybody lives like this. Uh, sometimes our kids don't know that, especially in New York City where a lot of our kids, I'm a New Yorker, so I know mm -hmm. a lot of our kids don't travel anywhere because mm -hmm. everyone comes here. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so um, there is this feeling of, oh, this is just the way it's supposed to be. Um, and it's important for you as an adult, as a teacher, to really say, you know what, um, it doesn't actually have to be like that. We can open our minds, we can think outside of the box. So we're prisoners in many ways, prisoners of our own thinking, prisoners yeah. of a certain structure that really treats students in a way like they are criminals who have to go through metal detection. Definitely. So that, that's a big metaphor for it you, It is a I big think, metaphor, but it is important for mm -hmm. us to teach the kids that we can free our minds, mm -hmm. most okay. definitely. We don't have to just live like that.
So when we look at this scene again, mm -hmm. and we, um, there's a lot also going on here about the students' expectations of themselves yeah. and the expectations that we have of them. True. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. What are their expectations of themselves and what are our expectations of these students, do you think? Well, a lot of the times it depends on um, their parents. Um, I can kind of tell <laughs> um, very early on um, whose parents really believe in them and who's and uh, which students are kind of struggling with nobody believes in me and so you kind of go through this um, as a student you go through this roller coaster of self-esteem and self-worth and and um, uh, maybe making choices that are um, going to land you in places that you don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to be so much of it is about choice um, though I do really believe it is up to not just one teacher, one great teacher to believe in this child. It's up to many, many adults to create a community of belief. Um, though sometimes a kid only has that one teacher and it is important to believe, almost have unconditional love for Are this student. Are we successful in doing this for our students? No. <laughs> I mean, it's a hard, it's a, it's a hard country because it's so very. We're in a real competitive country, and so it's hard to say I believe in you. Um, sometimes when when kids are mm -hmm. seemingly failing, 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 and so at times you want to say I don't believe in you anymore. Um, maybe you want to put out tough love. You know, some kids don't really work on tough love. Some kids are great. They're like, yes, tell me, just tell me I'm not great. Mm -hmm. And then I can rise to the top. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people. Mm -hmm. um, I, had, I had parents who were like, you can do it. If I had parents who said, no, you're not anything, I would actually be nothing. So um, it is, it's important to understand that every child needs uh, a different way to be, to be loved, to be nurtured mm -hmm. and supported and thus educated. You convey this aura of the students, I think, in the play, who don't have much confidence in their ability to really perform this play and yeah. get it done. Is that something that you saw in in your work in schools that students doubt Definitely. themselves? Definitely. Oh, there's there's so much doubt, and um, it's not, and it's seen in different ways. Kind of not coming to school, not coming to rehearsal, um, learning your lines, and then um, just not um, either just kind of not being present. Um, what happens, I think, sometimes is that um, when you grow up where sometimes your parents aren't present or, or the people around you aren't present for you, you don't really learn how to be present for yourself. And so maybe not making it to the mm -hmm. show which you think is like, eh, whatever, it's, it's a, such a big thing for teaching artists. Um, usually what I find is that the students after the next class, we try to do post-show wrap-ups. Um, those who didn't make it really do feel like, wow, man, I, I really should have. I should have. I should have shown up. So hopefully that for the next teaching artist or the next experience we have, they can realize, you know what, I'm going to not only go through this whole experience, but, but do it in a way that I'm really present for this moment. You've spent many years now doing this up. How many years? Eight years? Um, Seven, wow, eight years no, it's more? been a lot uh, longer. Okay, a lot longer. Okay. <laughs> I know I look so young. You do. But you it certainly has been do. a lot young, but longer. But what do you see as the educational systems expectations of these students? These are presented as our more challenging students. I think that's mm -hmm. clear. Um, what do you think the educational system expects of them, and what do you think of those expectations? Are they high enough? Are they too low? No, they're, they're so low. They're really low. Um, I think that. Um, Kids can, I, I think that when you have, I was very lucky in, in that I did go to Catholic school and that I had like so many high expectations placed on me. I'm not saying Catholic school is any better than public school, but I'm saying I had so many high expectations that I like had to do it. When I go into a school, when I do a workshop or um, a six week long um, residency with kids, I expect such greatness. And I know at times they're like, miss, we never did, my God, you're expecting so much. It is so important because it is important for them to start to expect a lot from themselves. If they just expect mediocre, they're going to get mediocre. Just the norm, they're going to get the norm. Um, I do feel that we, as um, as a as a country, as an educational system, really don't expect much. We got to amp it up big time. Okay, so since No Child Left Behind, we've moved into the Obama administration's race to the top. 
Right. It's like some people call it race to the bottom, but yeah. what do you think of the direction that we're going in now? Um, it's so hard because it's only been a few years, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, um, um, what do you say? about the direction we're going, getting going with jobs. I don't, I yeah. have no idea. Um, all I can do is, is think, okay, as a teacher, how can I best serve every single student that I work with? Um, um, I hope that um, in years to come, um, this will work out. Um, it's, a, it's, great, it's great when it starts from kindergarten, um, but I, I just, all I can do is hope. Can you tell us quickly one thing you want Theodore Goris to take away from this play? Uh, that our students have beautiful souls. Even in um, places where you're like, whoa, those kids, doesn't, it doesn't seem like they want to learn anything. They have souls just like you and I, and they want to learn and, and have great expectations for them, and they will, they will help you find those expectations with them. I know the play just recently closed yes. at the Barrow Street Theater in the Village, but will our viewers have another opportunity to see the play? Yes, yes, the month of November, all the month of November I'll be doing the show at Two River Theater at, um, that's in Red Bank, New Jersey, close to Asbury Park. We will be putting up some information then after Thank the show you. telling people where they can get the tickets. I certainly know that we recommend that everybody go and see the play. It was really terrific. <laughs> Thank you. Linda. Thank you so much for joining us today in Elijah's Sun. Mm. Good luck with the future performances. Welcome back to this edition of Ed Bites. Education Week reports that contrary to earlier beliefs, school drug testing does not act as a deterrent for high school males. In a recent study, male students reported no decreased use of alcohol, marijuana, or cigarettes, even if schools conducted drug testing. However, drug testing did deter female students in schools where students and adults respect each other and where the rules of the school are clearly enforced. Male students were also slightly less likely to use drugs at schools with positive environments. The study does provide a very large caveat. At schools with negative climates that also drug test, girls may be using more drugs. This suggests that drug testing may actually be counterproductive in schools with negative climates. Amid much talk about what skills students will need to succeed in the 21st century, eSchool News recently polled its readers on the skills they'd like every student to learn. The top 10 were to read, to write, to type, yes, on the computer, to communicate effectively, to ask questions, to be resourceful, to be accountable and responsible, to know how to learn, to think critically, and last but not least, to be happy. With the typing, is that with the thumbs or all ten fingers? Well, I think they mean that a lot of <laughs> students really can't type on the keyboard, mm -hmm. so. Well, that does it for this special edition of EdCast. Until next time, class dismissed. <laughs>